Hello, friends and family. Welcome to Bubble Talk, episode 10. I'm Tony Rodriguez here, and I am so excited. Here on Bubble Talk, we talk about fitness, fashion, and lifestyle, and today we have a show for you. Today, my special guest is the marketing strategist himself, keynote speaker, um, published author, um, host of the Think Like a Marketer show, and his recent most newest project is You Need a Show, Mr. Randall Chestnut. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> How was you know, that? It's always <laughs> uncomfortable when people start going through the list. It's like, uh, you know, be bragging about stuff and people are going, that's not a big deal. That's really not. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on the show. You're very welcome. Um, I, I, love the, I love this backdrop. It's like do you candy. Love it? Do you love it? I do. I love it. It's like tripping up candy off. It's, it's like, a, yeah. It's like Tony Rodriguez's little candy show now. <laughs> <laughs> and if you notice all my posts on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube, of course, because we download or uh, upload a lot of our episodes onto um, the YouTube channel, everything is like this purple pink thing. There's a reason behind it because I'm in love with it and it's part of my personality. So um, without further ado, yeah, and the audience loves it. Hi, audience. Hi, everyone out there. Thank you for tuning in. I'm so, so excited about today's show. We have a, quite a topic for you guys, okay? The topic is how has social media changed and created opportunities in the fitness and the fashion world? Like, we all know it's made it grow and be amazing, but, like, what other in what other ways has social media um, changed it? And so... I'm bringing on the expert to kind of talk about it, and let's start. Let's just jump right into it. Um, before, oh, good point. He pointed to my sheet. Good point. Before we start um, pre-show, I would like to thank my sponsor, Planet Beach Kingdom. That's the beautiful facility that we're sitting in right this moment. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., Tracy Me, who I'm going to keep saying her name because I like the sounds, <laughs> Tracy Me, Tracy Me, is amazing, and she is one of my sponsors, and has allowed me come in and film this show in her amazing place. So listen, she supports all of the Bubble Talk audience out there. So if you come in here um, to Planet Beach Kingwood and tell them that you are part of the Bubble Talk audience, you will receive your first spa service here free. So come on in, check, check it out. Tracy's not here. If I'm not here, it's okay. Come on in, just tell me with Bubble Talk. And she will definitely take care of you here at Planet Beach Kingwood. So, without further ado, now we can start the okay. show. Okay. <laughs> well, first, I just got to say, you know, I've never even heard of this concept of we're, we're sitting in this automated spa uh, on, on, on demand. demand. Automated yeah. on demand. It's like, and, and I was talking to the owner, you know, Medico, and she, they're actually going to make it available 24 hours. And I thought, well, please don't put the 24-hour sign out there because you may get the wrong people. Yeah, in. that's so, the wrong kind of spa, you know what I'm saying? But it, but it is going to be open. It is a 24-hour <laughs> automated spa with services, you know, like uh, the, the, the hot yoga is, is the one that really uh, stands out Well, what I love, all you working ones out there, you know our schedule's really hectic and crazy. And what I love is there is always a time available for you here. I mean, we work with, or she works with your schedule, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Like they are accommodating you and everyone loves to be accommodated, right? right. I and mean, we only have that one hour where we got to come get our teeth whitened and maybe get a hyperfacial or whatever. So in that time frame, she has a multitude of services that can help you and facilitate you in that one hour time frame. So seriously, give her a call automated on-demand spa services here at Planet Beach Kingwood. Yeah, and I think they put up, you cool. have a link. I've seen it. I see it here on the page. you got a link. They go to There's a link festival. either up or down. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, in the description of today's show, just click on it, and boom, you're connected to Planet Beach Kingwood and your free spa service. You know, and I think that it, it, you, when you run a company that's so progressive like Planet Beach that, like, you know, people want to do things when they want to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. Netflix... I mean, you're like, I want to watch Netflix when I want to watch Netflix. I want to watch Southern Charm, and I don't want to watch Southern Charm. And I do. <laughs> or I want to watch The Bachelorette <laughs> when I want to watch it. And, and you're seeing services like podcasting um, because podcast is just radio on demand. Um, and you know, podcasting is, is one of those things where radio missed out and podcasting filled in is, they can have people talk about 
Power Rangers. Like last night I spoke at the pod Houston and one of the guys came in and his whole podcast is about Power Rangers. And you ready for this? 10,000 downloads a month. What? It's Power Rangers. Who knew? Who I like figure? the pink Power Ranger. Yeah, I, I, like pink Power yeah, I don't even know. I don't, I, I don't <laughs> think I ever watched one episode of it. But oh, hey, more power to it. But it's like, what radio station would allow someone to come in and talk about Power Rangers? None. Right. So, you know, podcasting has been around a long time. And, but w- the one thing that, that has changed along the way that why podcasting is, is gaining even more traction is because in 2015, most cars have the ability to have the, uh, the I think it's called CarPlay, like mm-hmm. iPhone, you know, you plug mm-hmm. it in and you can see on the screen your actual iPhone or your Android and you click that little podcast and it's basically your on-demand radio and maybe you like listening to uh, Ben Shapiro. Fitness, fashion, or, and lifestyle. Yeah, maybe you like listening Bubble to talk. Bubble Talk on, <laughs> on uh, iTunes, iTunes, Stitcher. Yeah. Um, but it gives people the ability to say, I like listening to the Power Rangers or I like listening to Bubble Talk and Tony. I mean, I where radio didn't allow for that. Radio was kind of like mass, like shotgun and hey, if you don't like it, well, that's fine. This is all you have. Yeah. And you see the same thing in Netflix, right? So that's one of the things that that's just changing the landscape of fashion and fitness is to be able to have a show that revolves around shoes or lipstick or you know it, it. So it's not so much it's not let me just explain to my viewers it's not so much the idea of the industry per se but it's how we perceive fitness and how we perceive fashion is being totally changed and morphed by by social media yeah and, All right. and influencers influencer marketing yes. people who are really understanding the ideas behind social media are the people who are getting the most interest who are getting the most business are getting the most of exposure. I mean, um, the internet and social media have replaced the old days of television when right. when people used to pay an enormous amount for commercials. And you wanted to be the Super Bowl commercial. I mean, no offense, there's a little girl or a little boy on YouTube right now making millions of dollars doing toy reviews. Who gets more views than the Super Bowl commercials? People, right. come on. Yeah. I mean, it's time to wake up. You know? so, so influencer marketing is really nothing new. I mean, that was when they, they you know, Michael Jordan, when uh, you know, Sonny Bacara went to Michael Jordan and, and you know, whatever athletes that are wearing shoes and they said, hey, wear our shoes. That is, in essence, influencer marketing. If you go back into the 30s and the 40s, and Humphrey Bogart, they had the cigarette industry. If you look at those movies, these classy people were smoking cigarettes. We look at that today like that's not that classy. All right. right? I mean, yeah. you wouldn't look at that. as no, I wouldn't. <laughs> No, I wouldn't. would like bubbles, though. Yeah, but I do think bubbles are really fun. So, um, just saying. influencer marketing is just, it, it, that's nothing new. It's always been, you know, what is the, what is the end people or the Joneses, whatever you want to call it, or the people that you look to, what are they doing? What are they wearing? What are they, uh, you know, what workout are they doing? I mean, like, she definitely had help. She would not say that she had oh, that no, by she herself. definitely had a team. I mean, she had her mom, she had the show, she had all of those things. But even with those, there's been plenty of people who've had shows on television, but not but most, not very, in fact, none of them made a billion dollars in three years. She did it in three years. She went from making money to now she has a makeup, I mean, makeup. I mean, and the idea is, I think, you know, what people miss is there's a process. I'm sure there was a process in place for her, for her to follow. And maybe some of her six siblings chose not to follow this process. Maybe it was a process that her momager, um, Christian, had put into place. But she, and, and there are so many great, great processes out there that you can implement. And if you follow it and you follow it truly and consistently, you're going to reap the benefits. You're going right. to be successful. And who knows? But she had to have been ambitious and she had to be driven with all the craziness going on in her family. She focused on making money. She focused on making millions. She focused on her, I know for a fact, lipstick line, which I'm wearing, by the way, because I love it. I mean, and I'm not loving it because she's Kylie Jenner. I'm loving it because I put it on at 7 a.m. this morning, and it's still on. Right. And I've gone to, I don't know how many events today, and had, you know, bubbles, and had a lunch, and I'm still wearing the same. I mean, there's something to be said about a product. She's just not handing you a lipstick with her name on it. 
She knew what she was doing. She got with a great marketing team. She's ambitious. She's driven. I mean, props to her. Right. I give it to her. Like she's so uh, twenty years old, billionaire yes. about to be. I mean, come on. I mean, the thing is, is she she proved it. Anybody could do it, man. Now, maybe not anybody could just become a millionaire yeah, 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 or a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anybody can have a great living, make a, a great life for themselves, doing exactly what she did. And she did three things. She did number one, she she worked on having an audience. Now she did in that case had a team. A they had a they had a show, but she did her own stuff. She was on Snapchat, Instagram. She was utilizing the tools that are readily available to everyone else, right? Yep. That's number one. She built an audience. Number two, she connected with her audience. That's the, that's the one that people forget is like how how you connect with an audience is is key in this because if you can get an audience and they connect with you, they almost inevitably always look to you for advice. Like look to what they're going to buy, what they're going to buy, what they're going to get. And I can't believe you're looking at the camera. Sorry. I'm, I just saw Ozeal, <laughs> Kelly, Marissa, Kelly Hardwick. Hi, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. So, way you know, the, you're way sorry. Hey, hey. Yeah, <laughs> but okay. sometimes I forget. And he's yeah, talking put, about connecting with my audience. You're you my audience out front of out there. A woman and she's going to look at it. I mean, I did kind of at first look at my belt and make sure I didn't look too chubby. And then I started to like yeah. look and see who was watching. Oh, sorry. So I was going to so say, <laughs> so those three things, build an audience, work on a build an audience. And that's what this is about. This show is about sure. it. It's, it's the same thing that Oprah Winfrey did. And it's the same thing that Dr. Roz and Dr. Phil and, and Ellen DeGeneres and all those people recognized. And if you go down Gordon Ramsay's and all of those people decide about a show. And then if you go even deeper in niching stuff, you look at uh, Tyler Oakley's and you look at the uh, you know beauty pop like video games and, and, and Karina Garcia making slime. She built an audience, she connected with the audience, and then they look to her for advice. And when that when that ocean is mixed up, advertisers salivate at the mouth to give you money. And in her case, Disney wanted to give her sixty thousand dollars a month, and that's how she started out. Because um, well, our audience was kids, because slime is like a kid, a kid thing. Right. So I wanted to say, um, if if you're if someone is looking to do a podcast, because I talk about podcasts. So if you don't have a face for video, I, I want to say because I see no zeal on here. I spoke la last night at Pod Houston. Great but event. I, great event. Yes. If you're interested in starting a podcast, you want to uh, you you want to get a feel for it. He does meet up. I think it's once a month, at once least month. once a month. Go to Pod Houston on Facebook. It's a specific community for podcasters. Or if you already have a podcast and you want to kind of join in with people and maybe look for people to have on your show and you want to be on their show, yeah. it's a Pod Houston. Um, Ozil is the uh, he's on here. I think you can probably put a link on there if he's still on. Yeah, Ozil, put a link on there if you're still watching so, um, Pod Houston, please. So. You know, we're, we're, the topic is, you know, how, does, how does fitness and fashion, yeah. how does social media change it? So you have this lady we've talked about, the right. incidental icon. How did it change her? And when in history could a 64-year-old woman 64. have half a million people follow you and, and look to you for advice? And I will tell you the story. You have to look her up. Yes. She was waiting outside a facility in New York City for her friends because they were all fashionistas, all people really interested in fashion, but they were just attending a pre-fashion show event. And when she got out of the car, she was rocking such a cool outfit that the paparazzi thought she was a famous person and started taking pictures of her while she was waiting for her friend. She was no one. She was just a, a professor at a university waiting for her girlfriends. So when her girlfriends rolled up, they're all dying laughing because they're like, why are all these people taking pictures? And she's like, I have no clue, but roll with it. Like, go with it. And they were all like, you're the fashion icon. And they gave her this nickname. And so she went and spoke to the paparazzi and said, who do you think I am? And they said, we don't know, but the way you're dressed and the way you carry yourself, you look like someone famous. And thus, her life was born. Yeah. Like, that was how she became. And this is my whole philosophy and why I love to do bobble talk. And that's why dress kind of like different than other people it's like finding your own style and owning it because that is what's going to create your space that's what's going to create your your vision that's what's going to create your image for your brand if you're an entrepreneur or for some of you who are just working moms and don't really care about being an entrepreneur and doing anything like that you need to own who you are and find out your style i mean we all want to look and see what other people are wearing but don't try to be college 
I mean, that's just real. Especially those of us who are over 40. Come on. Let's give me her bank account. But, but you can own it and rock it like her with that type of confidence and great things will happen. Right. Like great things will happen for you. I wanted to say something about it. I know you got to do your talk. Yes. So, so we are midpoint of the show or close to it. And I just want to introduce my new sponsor, First Primary Care. I'm so excited. This is an affordable alternative healthcare system that for as low as $75 a month, you will have health care. And it's got preventative health care measures, it's screening, if you're a dance teacher, yoga instructor, real estate agent, people who maybe are 1099 employees, this is the prime program for you. So there is a link above or below in the description of today's show. Click on that and find out about first primary care. People listen, I joined, I'm now a member, and I'm gonna be an avid, avid person belonging to first primary care forever because I just really truly believe in it and you know I'm all about preventative health screening and being healthy and embracing um, your health and being really progressive about it so check out the link and yeah. thank you first primary care oh yeah I mean I mean you know it's so back to the top well so, tell so. them that you said who you used to work for and how you know a little about fashion we're like why oh, do you yeah. have Randall on and what's his <laughs> so, connection to fashion yeah. Tony listen he knows he's got some inside so Someone's I, here to watch the show. So, so back a few years back, I was hired by, and lucky enough, it was. Um, so I was on a plane flying to Chicago. I go there to visit my daughter, mm -hmm. and uh, whenever there's an empty seat that's next to you, and I got stuck because I was the last minute, so I got stuck in the middle seat, and there was an open seat. The only open seat on the plane was next to me. Right. Mm -hmm. And you always wait for them like, please shut the door, please. <laughs> yeah. seat, so you right? if, elbow if, you, room. if you've flown anywhere for or gone anywhere, you know this to be true. It's like, please let me get the seat. And then you got all this room, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, you always wait for them to shut the door. Well, uh, that happened. Shut the door, mm -hmm. move over, and then they the, never ever have they ever since I've been flying for a long time, like twenty years, have they ever opened the door once they shut it. And they opened they it. They opened it. They opened Dang it. it. And the one person, I'm like, well, it's the only seat. I'm like, doggone it. We go sit down with this lady. She comes in. She sits, she sits down next to me. And like most people, when you sit down with me, you know, a stranger, uh -huh. you, you need a little time to, like, you know, start, like, yeah. start a conversation. So I dozed off and slept. And then uh, I wake up and we started, uh, kicked off a conversation. And uh, she ended up in the fashion line when you meet somebody you know it's all based on uh, uh, context right? right i meet this lady she's running on the plane like who is this person yeah yeah who, and, who just got the door open for yeah yeah, yeah right so um I, I sat down and you know we start talking she goes oh yeah and she gives me her card and i'll the name i don't recognize this name right and i in the card i'm like hideous stories hideous, right? hideous card hideous terrible. card <laughs> so we start talking about business stuff and, uh, you know, she was like, well, what do you do? What, what would somebody do with this? Or what would you do? She starts asking me these things. I said, oh, well, this is what I would do. She goes, huh, that's good stuff. So by the end of the flight, she's like, hey, would you mind coming to my office and meeting with my team? I, I would be interested in hiring you. I'm like, okay. I wasn't even trying to get a job, get a job or do anything. <laughs> so I'm like, sure. So uh, the next time I, I went to Chicago, I went by her office, and it wasn't an office; it was like a factory. <laughs> I mean, she had like literally, a fashion house. She had like she had a, a, a cutting room, sewing room. A, 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 tell a, them, I know my audience is dying. Like, who did shit. he meet? I can't tell them. Why you Because they don't allow me. To, oh dang uh, it! I know it is. It, but, uh, so it really was all this. It, it was all of this. I'm like, holy cow! <laughs> you know, I'm expecting. Honestly, I expected like this little boutique. That she bought like a little sheet boutique, yeah. yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with those, yeah. But this was actually wholesale, and she sold to she's a famous three, designer. like, had her stops all over the country, right? And she ends up hiring for a whole year, yeah. And I, you know, worked with her, she had buyers all over the country. She had, she did, um, you know, fashion shows. She had, oh, um, yeah, and there's just uh, I, work, and I, went, I got to go along and like see the full process of picking fabric then. Why they do fabrics and and attending some workshop that she actually spoke at and and how they come up with it and when you see the like this back door of stuff you start saying hold on a minute that's all marketing 
Because if you think about it, who decides what you wear next season? Do you decide? The designers and the magazines you, and the, the advertisers. You know who decides? Mm-hmm. Influencers. They meet with these, they, they really meet with people Big who are icons. You know, early on, it may be like an actress or an actor, depending. Mostly it's actresses. Right. Because they, you know, they're involved in the process. And then, of course, designers, and they say, hey, we, we like this new fuchsia. It's going to be the color of the year. I think the new, what is the color now? Start this year. Start this. Like I've seen a lot of that, right? Well, that, that happened last year. They decided that was what we're going to do. Because what has to happen is there's a lot of things that have to happen between that season. All the manufacturers of the fabric, if you start thinking about like what has to happen for, to make a, a, you know, that, the yeah, end the color. Is it's not like they just early. go and they automatically print it in a printer and they yeah. give it to you. So that had all of the, 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 the people, the design houses, that, that when they design the cut or the design, because there's sometimes it, it's, a, it's a cut too. And it's the, the stitching. It's a polish. Yeah, there's so many it's some yeah. buttons. It's going to have buttons. Is it going to have belts? Is it going to be this? That has to happen almost a year in advance if you really understand the process. Without, you know, you don't. Oh, even more than you don't even really think about it. Maybe women think more about it than men. Yeah. But so all that has to happen. Yeah. So all of these little things, these big Oh, fashions, no, we think like that. Like, no, we do. think like that. When we're shopping, we see a nice pair of boots in the middle of the summer, and they're 20 bucks. You're buying those boots. Yeah. You may not be wearing them that summer, but you already know this when it true. gets cold and it's like 108 you know, dollars yeah. and up for some Uggs or whatever, but you find them for $20. Yeah. You're going to put those that's, in your basket. True. I'm just saying. So we the whole, do, we do think like that. So the whole process is, like that. so they've got to actually come up with it. Yeah. Kind of, they have this like symposium, like oh, I was at, it wasn't like how many people vote on chartreuse this year. It's yeah. like, that was the feeling that they were getting. It's like, and, and a lot of pop culture influences, like what's going on. Yeah. It's like it's amazing how, Colors like positive vibes and colors affect positive vibes, and sometimes black may be in, like, yeah, yeah. So now they decided now they all their fashion houses they go back, they design that the, whatever you know, they're they're cut for their audience, right? Then they've got to go, they've got to buy the fabric, um, you know, because they, they're going to make it a lot, and then they've got to send that so, out, and then they've got the sewers, and they've got to make it, then they've got to get the buyers to go out to, you know. All these different, different, maybe it's a smaller one, or maybe it's a big, a big. You know, so store he like really this. understands. Yeah, that's, that's what he's, right. he's giving you his credit. His but I am right not here. a fashionista. <laughs> and uh, while I keep looking at the laptop instead of the camera, I know. But anyway, I put a camera. But I want to know then, with all of your background and knowledge, how has social media changed how we, the working moms of the industry, the working moms of the United States, the working moms of King William mm-hmm. Houston? How does the social media affect our perception or perspective of fitness and fashion? Yeah. How has it changed us? So what it has, what social media has, the major thing that it has done, it has given the average person, the mom who has kids, she's at home, and she does have a sense of style. She understands style. She follows it. She un, she just eats and breathes it. It gives her the ability to have a voice and to reach thousands of people that, that may connect with her. And then the, the and it gives her the opportunity because you see this with influencers all over all over America, even mm-hmm. micro influencers, which maybe aren't the people who have hundreds of thousands of followers. Maybe they have you know, ten to twenty five thousand, which is still good. Yeah. And a local brand says, "Oh my God, if you, I want you to to, to talk about my brand because you know." Yeah. And um. So it's given us a voice. It's, it's given, given us an opportunity. Person, it's given somebody like a Karina Garcia, twenty three years old, to make time at her house and make two million dollars. Or like a Tony Rodriguez, at age fifty, decides, you know what? I'm going to take this social media thing and I'm going to run with it. Yeah, yeah. And here I am, eight months later. I did not know anything eight and a half months ago about social media. I didn't even have an Instagram account. Yeah. I didn't know what Snapchat was. And here I am, you know, thirteen thousand plus viewers per week on all my social media platforms watching bubble talk we can hear what i have to say about fashion fitness lifestyle living healthy i mean seriously this is a great opportunity for people out there who maybe thought i'm just a stay-at-home mom nobody really cares or listens to what i have to say but you this provides you with a voice and that i'm so glad you said that randall because that was my whole premise of the show was like i want my audience members to get something from watching me not just hearing me talk about hey this dress came from so and so. Hey, this is my sponsor. Hey, I'm, I'm going to provide you with some serious opportunities to have a voice yeah. and do what you really love to do and I mean, use social media to do and it. it. And it's taken the nerdy guy or the nerdy gal in high school 
that loves science, right? And, and everybody thought that person was weird. And it gave them the ability to actually make a living and like do what they actually love. You talked about Kylie Jenner. So I don't want to imply that this is easy. Yes. It's not easy. It's like anything else. Yes. There's, a, there's, a, there's a work, there's a commitment, and there's consistency. Both of those mixed in are, um, I don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, go like, ahead. We don't have a show going on over here. It's like, I'm going to talk to the okay, Go ahead. Go ahead. No. <laughs> oh, Lord. Go ahead. So it takes oh, work to not be AD. If you have ADD. And you're doing a show. <laughs> Did he just talk? Oh my gosh, Randall Chestnut. We're having a show and you're talking to the crew. Okay, sorry. He's my son. Not, uh, I'm not interested enough. I could talk about it. So it gave, it, it, to answer your question, it gave somebody who really had found frogs or makeup or science Pearls. or whatever it is interesting, it gave them an ability to do that and make a great living. Not everybody wants to be a doctor, lawyer, uh, or, or go work for somebody. Some people like just, and it gave everyone they put everybody on equal footing no matter what your uh, what your stance in life is that you're you're growing up in a poor neighborhood um you know, or you grow up in a rich neighborhood i say that um it's the equalizer for, for somebody you know a lot of people um there's a book called uh, uh, david and goliath written by uh, malcolm, malcolm malcolm gladwell and he, and he the book he named um david and goliath because when you think of David and Goliath, the story of David and Goliath, you always put Goliath as he was the he was the stronger person, or he was the you know the wealthy person, or whatever you want to be. Like that person was imposing that, and then David was this weak person. There's just no way that David could beat this person. If you really analyze and you break down the story and you think about it, when Goliath challenged his Philistine soldiers to, he challenged them to a sword fight. The unfortunate part for Goliath is that David brought a gun. So if you look at it and you said, who would win if you had a gun and a knife fight? Who would win? Who has the advantage? The guy with the gun. Mm -hmm. So the story is not told properly. It's David who actually had the advantage and Goliath did not. Had David came and fought him with a knife, then of course David Goliath, but he did not. And that story is not told that way. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the story. So the book talks about we and we uh, almost give ourselves excuses that we say we grew up in a poor neighborhood and he grew up in a we rich We didn't have opportunities. And when you break down what makes, if you talk, and I have on my show that think like a marker show, people are successful and I work with uh, companies that have successful people working for it. All of them have the same thing. They have two, two major things, drive and discipline. And the drive and discipline that it doesn't care if you're rich or poor. In fact, you're more likely to have more drive if you're poor than somebody who's Amen. spoiled and get everything. And their mom cooks for them and they clean their room and they don't do that. They're more likely to not be successful. The person who doesn't and has to do it and and, and appreciate it. And they know what they everything. don't want now because they live that life and they're wanting to get out of it. So it's so if you read, if you read a book, that's a great book. It's told. Obviously, there's always a, a, a side that's not. Now, there's rich people like Donald Trump. He's given money. He made a yeah. billionaire. You, you can make excuses. Right. You can do it, but you can't do both. You right. make excuses. You actually do action. Right. There's never the ability to do both. And what have you seen, Renal? Because I know there, I have a lot of audience members out there who are in the fitness, health, and wellness. How has it? How has it influenced us in that respect? Has it been the same for fashion as it has been for fitness, health, yeah. and wellness, or is it? Done a little. I've, I've seen, I'll give you my perspective first, but I'm going to allow my guests to speak first about what have you seen in the health and fitness industry? Like, how has social media changed that? Is it the same influencer marketing? Um, so, um, like most things, marketers screw things up. But <laughs> once marketers get inside and they, and they, you know, gravitate towards it and they really run with it and they get clients and they eventually all marketers learn, I got that's working and they all start doing it, right? Much like that, people in the fitness and the fashion, I mean, I don't need to tell them, most people are on Instagram. Everyone knows that Instagram is mainly revolves around visual fitness and fashion. Sure. 
yeah, are visual things. You know, you can see if somebody has yeah. nice abs because everybody on there's there. I won't. I won't tell you what my comic relief is. Sometimes. No, I do. <laughs> That's why I have. So I, can I say what my comic relief okay. is? Probably the same as yours. Okay. And I don't get it because. Oh like, my gosh! I hope. Okay. Yes, it's this people. A, it's people who do these crazy. Like I seen one today. <laughs> It was, you know, those big plates, the big 45 plates yeah, that, you, yeah. that you put on and you lift them. I don't yeah. know what they call them. You put them on the ends of the Yeah, you put bar. them on the ends. They had four of them. And they put their, and they did a push. They put their hands on. They stood them up, right, four of them. Put their hands on one end and they had their feet on the other. And they were doing push-ups. And I'm like, what is the benefit of doing that? Other than it looks funny when you're in the gym. And like, what is that person doing over there? Like, there's no benefit to doing that. Like what are you what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to visualize. It was funny though to watch the video. Maybe that was what no, they were trying so to bad. accomplish. We're gonna go to hell in the handbasket because sometimes I do. I'll be we'll be working together. It'll be late at night. And I'll show him. Look at this video. He's like Tony Rodriguez. I'm like I'm just confused with what she's trying to do right now. Like I'm I want to be supportive. I'm trying to be supportive, but I'm trying to figure out what she's doing with the two little um, barbell in this. So you got a couple people. Hey, here. yeah. Diaz says hello. Hi, Vincent. How are Sorella. you? Mary Helen. You know. you see, don't yeah, go ahead. So you got Sorella. You got your mom. I think that's your mom right there. Hey, Mary. Jean Bumpus. How are Jean, you? Oh, Kelly. Kelly says she knows uh, the incidental icon. Stop it. Yeah, she does. Right hey, there. Dig. How are you? Digna Caruso. Awesome. You guys, thanks for tuning in today and watching. I hope we're being enlightening for you. So I know that you are like. People come on the show it's like, okay, Randall said all that, but how does that help me? Yeah. Like that's really what people want to know. Yeah. How can social media, if I'm in fashion or I'm interested in fashion or I'm in fitness, what I'm about to say, it doesn't matter if what business you're in. Right. It could be, any, you could any be an account. So listen to this. Any business is going to benefit from what he's about to say. So um, it's those three things, like build an audience. So you have to see yourself, what is it? that I'm interested in, that I'm interested, I'll use the one the because it's funny, is uh, the Power Rangers, right? Mm -hmm. He knew that he his audience had to be people who were freaks about the Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. So where do you find these people, right? Social media gave us the ability to create groups. And he- I uh, love Power Rangers. I love Power there Rangers. There's, and if you go search for Power Rangers, there's groups. So you go search for groups that Power Rangers and you join the group and lo and behold, you got access to people who love Power Rangers, and there's more than one group. So know there. your audience. So yes, yeah, so knowing your audience, that's probably a, a, a hard one. So you know, let's say that you're a real estate agent, right? Like, like real estate agent, well, that's such a broad term. Like you could sell real, you could sell luxury homes, you could sell investment properties, you could sell new homes, you could sell uh, to veterans. I mean, there's so many, yeah, yeah there's so many yeah. of those things. So really understanding if, if you're going to get an audience, what audience do you want to talk to? What audience do you are you, do you feel like you would best? So if, if you let's say you were a retired colonel from the army, mm -hmm. it might make sense that you, if, if you're going to become a real estate agent, that you stay with, with the veterans. Veterans. I mean, what, I mean you, you obviously liked it. You stayed there for a long time. I couldn't make it past four years. They're saying, uh, yeah, no, we'll let you in early. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to need you. Need you need to go. <laughs> I don't think we're going to need you. You sure? I'm all stay. No, no, I no, love no, it here. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, so once you can decide on what it is that you really love, I mean, that's what really gave us the ability to do things we truly, truly love. Yes. Not things we felt like we had to do. Yes. Like that mom said, you got to go get a county degree. I'm like, well, I don't really like a county mom, but you're, you're going to be an attorney because your daddy and your papa was an yeah, attorney. Yeah. And maybe you don't like it. And people later in life, Sign. And usually when people take up the path of doing something like that, they usually don't do well in it. Because their heart's not in it. Yeah. They're not loving it because their heart's not in it. So, so understanding who your audience is, what you want to talk about, who your audience is. There's plenty of access. So groups, there's access to find these people. Okay, so that's one. So then now you found their audience, okay, right? number one audience. And, and like everything else in life, and when you meet someone for the first time, be interested in them first. I mean, it's like look at them when they're talking. Look at them when they're talking. Yeah. <laughs> don't look up in the sky. Like, don't, don't be <laughs> waving at your son. Yeah, don't yeah, don't take like, pictures. <laughs> so be interested in them. I mean, be genuinely interested. I mean, if you're if you love Power Rangers mm -hmm. and you found a group of people and it's like Power Rangers, we the first question you'd ask is, who's your favorite one? Yeah. And yours is the pink one. Yeah, of course. And he's like, oh wow, why do you like the pink one? Like and then and now he's asking you, and before you know, ten minutes later, you guys love each other, and you. <laughs> it's 
So you have to, when you like something, you genuinely like it, and you find people that like it, they have to be genuinely interested in what they want. Yeah. First, if you're the initiator of the conversation, okay. and if you start off with that, with, with that, that always makes for a much better relationship than when you sit down and go, "Hey, I want to tell you all about me." And then we've all sat next to somebody on a plane like that, or met somebody at the. And you're, you've, you've been out networking, and it's the person that goes, "Here's all my stuff," and you call me. You're like, I didn't even. You didn't even ask me one thing about me. You don't even know my name. And then you usually like, boop. yeah. <laughs> So, um, and what's three? That's so, so that's that's once we're still on, we're still you're, on one, you're still sorry. working with your audience because the byproduct Genuine. of you genuinely being interested in someone, and uh -huh. it's the same thing if you're if you want to date a woman, if, if she's sitting there the whole hour and you're telling her how rich you are, and how smart you are, how everything you are, there's a high likelihood she's not gonna like that. But if you're like wanting about her, you're curious about her family, you're curious about what her and you're listening, she'll go home and think you had the best conversation in the world. And you may have said three words, but to her, you actually cared about her. And that's where we were there. And it's, and it's not just her. Gen it's her. Right. Men are the same thing. I think men's love language is right up there for the majority of men is words of affirmation. <laughs> it's, and, it's, and it's unfortunately that all women know that, and that's their secret weapon against you. If they want you to do something, uh -huh. Use words of affirmation, and I get him to go to the moon and back to get me a diet coke in the middle of the night. So, one the byproduct of doing that and right. caring about someone or your audience is that they they connect with you. Sure, and that's the sub too. Okay. Connecting with you, connecting, okay. and you connect with the audience, and now the audience, and now you listen to the audience because sometimes. The audience shares things that you didn't really think about. They thought they put it in a different way, you put a different spin or whatever it is. They didn't think about things like, or they just educated you on something. They right. knew more about the Power Rangers than you. Right. Or That's fashion. They go, oh, God, did you know about this lady? Yeah. Did like, you know Sam McCartney's coming out with really cool pants? Yeah. Our truth. So, yeah, they, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that moves you from... Uh, they look connecting with you to them now looking for you know, looking to you for, for advice, recommendations for recommendations sure. and sometimes that can be a two-way street as well and if you do those three things and you uh, uh, um Denzel Washington last year he received the uh, NAACP uh, I think it's a lifetime achievement award mm -hmm. um, if they don't they don't give it that light they really uh, and uh, he gave this amazing speech said a lot of amazing things but two things really stuck out and he said with Without commitment, you'll never start. So that's number one. If you just do, taking all that in consideration, what you're going to do a show to build your brand and, be, and talk about things you like, you have to commit to it. Number one, to start, you have to actually push the button on the on the and on not the, be afraid to and not be afraid. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that in the closing. Thing, okay. The, the afraid part. Okay. And then he said, with and without consistency, you'll never finish. And it's the same. If you think about it, you wanted to be, you really did want to be a doctor. Think about that. You have to commit. And um, and then they have a program that's called you know, college, and they have a system that you have to follow. And you have to consistently go to class. You have to consistently pass the test. And you have to consistently put up with the BS that you don't like. You have to consistently miss things that you don't want to miss. And you do all of those things. And at the end, give you a piece of paper where you can go take the test and you start all over again. <laughs> You got to consistently go past. You got to do these to eventually. Now you are blessed with the the, the moniker of MD or whatever it is, dentist. Mm -hmm. And it's no different than anything else that you choose to do in life. If you always look at that, I mean, I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards going to university because it's a system that they can they can they see it, it, they can follow it. You get a little piece of paper, but it, but we're just stolen up this bill of goods. It's no good outside of doctor, lawyer, anything. We're being sold this bit of piece of paper, basically, that doesn't guarantee. The college doesn't say we guarantee you if you get this, well, X, Y, Z, you get this. Mm -hmm. But we have committed to it, mm -hmm. consistently follow the rule, and mm -hmm. we got that piece of paper. And if someone wanted to be a YouTuber or Instagram or, or Facebook or like show you. or podcast mm -hmm. whatever, commitment, consistency, and the three things that I talked about. And the thing that they love is if because when it's something that you love, you just naturally it's not it doesn't feel like work. I love this. Yeah, I, I love it.
and I and I'm and I'm uninhibited about it. Like if I mess up, if I scratch my knee, or I'm, wave at your son, yeah, or talk to, hey, how are you, Thomas? <laughs> While my guest is speaking to me, I mean, it's okay because I'm on live TV and nobody expects perfection. If you do expect perfection, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I feel sorry for you because this is called live TV, which means things go wrong. We're not perfect. We're both humans, and so we're just coming on to interact and share some incredible knowledge with my audience and hopefully you've learned some really cool things about um, social media and building your brand and specifically fitness. I'm going to give you my quick four second take on it. I have seen a lot of people go away from the true meaning of what being fit is. Fitness is not just being a great yoga instructor. Fitness is not being just a great dancer. Fitness is physical fitness. That means taking care of your body in general, like in a, in the whole. That's why I'm such an advocate for healthy eating. That's why I'm such an advocate for daily stretching. It's, it, it, you know, I'm not just wanting to make millions on a stretch video. I, I want, and I am monetizing off of this, but I have to, to pay my bills, I'm a single mom. But I do it because I love the idea of being physically fit. Like I love the idea of taking care of myself. We have one life and we have one, body and I want to be here for a really really long time for my kids and for my kids kids and so I have an obligation to myself to my God everybody who, who has contributed to this whole mission of mine to take care of myself and I just hope that I can spread some positivity out there and give you all these amazing concepts to help you grow your business so that you can live the life that I think you were intended to live which is to be happy I am really happy I cannot imagine my life without all of this anymore because I it is so much a part of who I am and I hope my audience out there we didn't go too deep for you and we didn't give you enough laugh laugh today but um Randall any close remarks as we as we wrap it up yeah I think you know when, when especially with something like this like live tv like you said I mean the one thing that people fear more than like right there with death is rejection uh, and, and you put yourself out there when you put yourself on camera or you're mm -hmm. on a radio or on the uh, a podcast mm -hmm. or, or are you just going to talk to somebody that doesn't know you and you're, you're cold calling someone in sales. The reason that we get so terrified mm -hmm. goes all the way back to when we were you know, cavemen and, and, um, and we had to stick together because mm -hmm. if you were kicked out of the community you could not survive you had to. everybody had a role everybody protected one another and they all had a role on what made them stay alive anybody who was ejected from that community for whatever reason mm -hmm. was not going to be able to survive mm -hmm. so you imagine thousands and thousands of years that being ingrained in our mind and we eventually now it's in the back of your mind it's in your subconscious and it's a part of us now you fast forward where that doesn't apply you can live alone you can go live and you can go do your thing and and you could survive. You could a be hut. A, you a hut. <laughs> but that does not change the the, 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 the the brain, the crocodile brain that is inside of our brain. It doesn't even know why that I'm so terrified of something. Not being accepted into that a I'm talking to. Them. I'm literally just talking to a plastic thing right there. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking thing, to. Camera. Why would I be afraid of that? <laughs> yeah, no. Why would I be afraid of going over this total stranger and they say no? Yeah. I'm like, because it has less to do with that. And more to do with our uh, DNA. So I would say that all of those things are, if you can convince your mind long enough, you'll eventually it goes away. You have to trust me on that. That it goes away, that fear of the rejection part that, that ends up, you, you, you start training, retraining your mind that, hey, we don't live back then. If I get ousted out of the community, I still survive. Yeah. And there's other people out there that will accept me. Mm -hmm. So I would say if I had goes with anything and someone who's considering, Doing a show, or you know, even if somebody cold calls or do something, they're totally terrified of that. I would just say it's an all. It's just an illusion from a days that are past, uh, you know, long gone of what makes us feel like we're rejected out of the community. And you'll be fine, and you'll retrain your brain. And now, it's that rejection part that makes people miss so many opportunities in life. Yes. Yes. So hopefully, you guys learned something from us today here at Bubble Talk. Um, if you want to reach Randall Chestnut, where could they reach you? And and yeah. tell them a little bit about You Need a Show, which is your yeah. latest project. Well, you can find I do I do a show called Think Like a Marketer, where I bring uh, marketers, uh, entrepreneurs, and innovators, and kind of 
dive in and see how they think so differently. Mm -hmm. Number one, because I'm just so curious about why, curious you know, what makes this person so successful at what it is. And, and now I'm on episode 11, and already I'm seeing a, some common themes in all of these people when you get to talk to them. Um, so I do that. It's on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. live on Facebook. You can go to Think Like a Marketer Show on Facebook and uh, follow there. And I have a group. It's the all-in group. Hey, if you're in, in a marketing uh, or entrepreneur, you, it's a, you can go there and apply to it. As long as you don't get crazy with the, your stuff and you provide value, I'll, I'll let you in. I go there live, too, and do some uh, other little, little bit more deep dive stuff for advanced stuff. Yeah. They can reach me there. Instagram is rchestnut. And um, I, you know, obviously my Facebook is Randall Chestnut. No T in the middle, two at the end. I say little in the middle, but I got much back. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, so you asked me about the, the you need a show. You know, uh, this concept that we're doing right here, I like, I just, you see it repeated over and over. Like how over it went from, you know, Mississippi to, and now she's like, no, she can go into, she could literally walk into anyone's office in the world and they'll open the door. I mean, think about how amazing that, that, that is. And she did it all through a show. Mm -hmm. So I didn't need any more proof that a show was the way to go if you wanted to build a business or a brand. Sure. So I decided, well, do people know what to do? Or do they know how to set a format for a show, how to get people a guest on the show and all the equipment and everything? Because there's a lot that rolls around doing a show. And I put together the You Need a Show that I'll be rolling out. Actually, all of the training material is actually done. So yes. if somebody actually wanted it, I could give it to them. But building how people get to it, I, I'm shooting those last videos this week. So um, if someone is interested in starting a show and they need the tools, uh, you could just uh, message me and I'll uh, get it to you. And if you want to really know if this works, this is how you can reach me because I am a product of Randall Chestnut's work. Um, he has been my mentor through this whole process. He is the one that recommended that I be in front of a camera and speak to people. He thought my concepts were interesting, innovative, and progressive, I guess, for an older lady. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> She's old. I did not say that. No, 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 no. I mean, it, oh. it, it's, it's really valuable for you to know someone and meet someone. I mean, a lot of people talk a lot of game. A lot of people talk about a lot of programs. But have you ever met someone who's been successful at the process? Have you ever really met someone who's had that gastric bypass surgery and been really successful? I know them. It's really amazing to speak to people like that because you really get the dirty and the grit on what things are really, really like. And if you need a mentor, if you are skeptical, if you're not sure, you can reach me. I can tell you everything that goes on pre-show. I can tell you everything that goes on post-show, how much work it takes, how many hours of a commitment it is, and then I can also tell you how I monetize and supplement my income because of what we're doing today at only 10 episodes. And I'm growing. I'm growing every every day. I want to thank all my Bubble Top viewers out there. I want to encourage you to go to Stretch Your Lifestyle, my Facebook page. Please join. I'm going to be doing free videos for stretching, tips on healthy eating, daily motivational tips quotes about just get up in the morning ladies and get dressed and own your day run your day you run it be the queens of your house okay so that's my whole perspective of the life that you were supposed to live you can reach me on instagram tony underscore rodriguez one facebook live is bubble talk you have a youtube channel and on itunes follow my podcast please on itunes for bubble talk Randall Chestnut, thank you for being a guest. Oh, I really, right. really appreciate it. Planet Beach Kingwood, Tracy Me, thank you so much for your beautiful facility and being so supportive of this show and of my mission of supporting uh, working moms out there. Get out every day and make the day count. Love your family, love your children, and most of all, love yourself. And thank you to First Primary Care. Peace, guys. <laughs>